nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. I'm not worthy of the scars in his hands. Yet he chose the road to Calvary to die on my stead. Why he loves me, I can't the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, would you bless your name? We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for sending the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, to save us and prepare us for heavenly glory. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today you reveal more of your grace, more of your mercy, more of your love to every one of us in Jesus name I will pray Lord none of us will remain sinners unbelievers and people outside your kingdom at all that you have done to bring us to the kingdom in Jesus name we pray will not toy with our salvation will not gamble with our eternal life and we will not toss your grace, your salvation to the side in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to take your provision of salvation seriously and to prepare to meet you in glory. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Matthew chapter 26. We're looking at verse 26, Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and break it, and gave it, blessed it, break it, and gave it to the disciples, to the disciples, to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins but I say unto you I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom as we look at the words of Jesus Christ speaking as our Savior speaking as our Lord speaking as the greatest prophet that ever lived and speaking as the one that has the plan of god the program of god in his hand he said to start with there's going to be the father's kingdom and it is a future kingdom and that the church will be preserved the disciples will be preserved 
until that kingdom and that he will eat and drink with his disciples the believers in that new kingdom of the father that gives us assurance from that time until he comes back again the church will remain alive and vibrant and we are part of that church will be alive and vibrant in Jesus name and then he said until he comes again until he drinks it new he says we should be showing forth his days and what is death signified what is blood signified what is body signified that tells us then he died as sure as he died he's coming again he'll come again in jesus name as we look at the revelation of the gospel to paul the apostle it tells us in first corinthians chapter 23 chapter 11 verse 23 first corinthians 11 verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you hold on if you have not received anything from the lord you cannot deliver anything to anybody is anybody there trying to deliver the word of salvation unto all the people and he has not received that grace of salvation in his own life anybody there trying to deliver the doctrine of sanctification and he himself has not received that experience of sanctification anybody there that is trying to teach and trying to expose, expound the word of God. And he himself has not received the power and the effectiveness of the word of God in his life. You cannot do that. You can only deliver what you have received. That's why it's very important as we come to the church that a point comes in our lives. We personally definitely receive the instantaneous experience of salvation without that you have nothing to say to other people without that you don't have a testimony you don't have an evidence you have nothing that you're going to deliver to other people and on the final day you have nothing that you're going to tell God this is what I got you must receive before you can deliver the 23 for i have received of the lord of the lord of the lord not just of the other preachers not just of the people that are proclaiming the gospel i received this of the lord there are things to receive from the lord you cannot receive from any man salvation sanctification Holy Ghost baptism and the definite experience of knowing that you belong to God, the evidence and the conviction and the witness of the Spirit, you can only receive that from the Lord. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. That which I delivered unto you. I'll be very careful research was drawn to receive anything from anybody who has not received anything from the lord i'll be very much careful take it that i do not receive counseling advice instruction message dream prophecy anything from anyone who is speaking out of his own carnal vain mind and has not received anything from the lord how many people are running about and they want to deliver something to you they want to give something to you check up have they received anything from the lord 
here Paul the Apostle said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When anybody comes to deliver anything to you, you must compare it with what you have in the book of God. Here Paul the apostle said, I received of the Lord. I'm hearing, tell me, let us know. And then he said, in the very night, that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, that's right, that agrees with Matthew, that agrees with exactly what happened. If anybody says, I receive anything from the Lord, I'm going to compare with the Bible. If there is any iota of difference, if there is anything that is contrary to the word of God, you have it in your hand. You make the comparison if they tell us something, if they tell you something, if they propose something, if they deliver anything that is not in total, complete, perfect agreement with the revealed, reaching word of God, we we'll say, no, it cannot be. We're men and women of the book. We're a church of the book. Deliver it, we're going to examine it with the word of God. And as we examine what Paul the Apostle said with the word of God, we find it's true. We find it is real. Verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup. Have you noticed exactly as it happened that Jesus, first of all, broke the bread? And then told them, here is what you are to take among yourselves. He didn't, you know, put it upside down and put the blood and then the bread. And then put the cup and say, oh, I, I, forgot, some, I forgot something. Hey, we must talk about the bread. Line in line, one after the other, he said exactly how it happened. And the Lord revealed to him exactly what had happened. After the same manner, he took the cup. When he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as he ate, eat this bread, the first thing, and drink this cup, the second thing, he do show the Lord's death till he come, till he come, till he come again. You know what he's telling us? Yes, he wants us to take the Lord's Supper. But it says we must understand the reason why and the purpose why. We're showing, we're demonstrating, we're revealing, we're teaching, we're reminding the people of the Lord's death. Not only that, we're telling them that as we eat this and drink this, he is coming again. If you don't believe, in his death, how can you take the Lord's Supper appropriately? If you don't believe that Christ is coming again, what are you showing? You cannot show the Lord's death until he comes. If you don't believe that the church will remain strong, vibrant, indestructible, between his death and his coming again. What are you showing? He wants you to understand his death, his church, his coming again. We understand the Lord's Supper. 
But now, as you look at verse 29, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, the essential thing, discerning the Lord's body, the important thing, discerning the Lord's body, the indispensable conviction, discerning the Lord's body. I'm talking to you today on discerning the benefits of Christ's sacrifice. Discerning the benefits of Christ's sacrifice. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the Passover benefits for every believer. The benefits of the Passover. The Passover benefits for every believer. Number two, the predicted breaking of his body. When the Lord's Supper was instituted, Christ was about to die, but he had not died. Christ was about to be betrayed. He had not been betrayed. He was about to be smitten and beaten, but he had not been smitten and beaten. But he predicted it. And he gave the bread and he said, This is my body. Very soon, I'll be beating. Very soon, I'll be smitten. Very soon, this body will be broken with lashes and with buffetings. The predicted breaking of his body. Number three, the purchased blessings through his blood the blessings were received through his blood coming to number one the passover benefits for every believer i thought the passover is gone the old covenant passover is gone but look at first corinthians chapter five First Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, Put out therefore the old leaven, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. He mentions here the Passover and he mentions the leaven. And he says in verse 8, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice. He says, since Christ a Passover has been sacrificed for us. Let malice be something of the past. Don't allow malice to come in with you into the new life. Then he says, the leaven of wickedness. He says, the wicked heart belongs to the old life. And do not allow that old leaven of wickedness to pass on with you to the new kingdom, but with the leavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let's see what he's referring to. Exodus chapter 12. Christ is the Passover lamb. He has been sacrificed for us. And now he says, we must keep every form of leaven away. Now that we know that Christ, a Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And this 
is the preview of the death of all repentant sinners, separation from God, separation from life, separation from eternal life, separation from heaven. It's a preview that those who die in sin, who live in sin until death, the judgment of final death will be upon them. Against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you. For a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will tell me, pass over you. That's the Passover. Pass over you. Pass over you. It says, yes, the Israelites were also sinners. They are broken the law and the word of God. But now they sacrifice the lamb as a substitute. And when I see the blood of that lamb, the blood of the substitute, I will pass over you because the judgment had been visited on the substitutionary lamb. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no living found in your houses. You're observing the Passover. Seven days. Seven is a number for completeness. It's a number for perfe per perfection. Now he's telling the church, Christ, the final sacrifice has been offered for us. Christ, the Passover lamb final has been offered for us and then for all the days of your life after that. Seven days, perfect days, complete days, your entire life. Living shall not be found anymore in your heart, in your life. It says, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Understand? I will pass over you. It's an experience of a night. It's an experience that is instantaneous. Is an experience of a moment. Salvation is an instantaneous experience. An experience of a moment. You repent. You believe on the Lord. You appeal to the blood that was shed for you. And instantaneously, in a moment of time, you're saved. I will pass over you. Now, how about the rest of your life? How about how you live after that salvation? That's what the Lord is talking about. He's saying after that instantaneous salvation, an experience of a moment, you clear away leaven from your life. And he talks about the leaven in the New Testament. And he's saying, that level represents malice, wickedness, insincerity, hypocrisy, and a life of sinning. After salvation, righteousness must follow. Then it says, anyone that eats leaven after the Lord that passed over him that night, that moment, for the next seven days, he said, he'll be cut off. That means those who are saying at a moment of time, instantaneously, one day, I gave my life to Christ, I'm saved. And then after that night, after that decision, after that salvation, they go back to the old life. They're cut off. Because it says, such a person will be cut off. Verse 20, ye shall eat nothing 
Lemont, in all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Verse 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning if an Israelite applies the blood immediately applying the blood he goes out I have done what God says I should do and the blood is there already on the lintel of my house and when he sees the blood he will pass over me with that erroneous conception he goes out of that house and is not under the blood if he goes out he'll be destroyed people don't say I'm just coming from a crusade I'm just coming from a place I heard about the Passover lamb behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and I raised up my hand and I believed in the blood of the lamb I am saved and after that they go out into the world they go to their nightclub they go to their shrine they go to the false religion as they go out they're no more under the blood and they pass over will not avail for them that's why we want to be very clear and very detailed that the Passover is not a license to continue in sin. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Any amen there? Yeah. Verse 51. In verse 51, and it came to pass the self-same day. It came to pass the self-same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. 